Hey there my wedding planning friends and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, thanks so much for clicking on my video. I'm Emily Summer, I'm a wedding planner based in Montana and I make weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice. Today's video we're going to talk all about marriage licenses. I feel like this is one of those things that is obviously a very important piece of your wedding but something that isn't really talked about a whole lot and there are some logistics that go into both acquiring your marriage license and what you do with it during and after your wedding. First of all, what is a marriage license? A marriage license is the legal document that is obtained by a couple prior to marriage. So you get your marriage license before your actual wedding and then you sign it on your wedding day. So there's both a marriage license and a marriage certificate. So your marriage license is what you apply for prior to your wedding and what you sign at your wedding day. And then when you submit that back to the county clerk, then you receive your marriage certificate afterwards. And that is what is the basically the legal document that you receive to state that you are legally married. And if you ever need proof of that, your marriage certificate is what you have for that. So acquiring a marriage license and, and kind of what you do with it and how to file it could vary slightly depending on where you are. So this is based off of my knowledge in my current area and there might be some research that you might have to do just to make sure that you have all the information that you need for where you are getting married. So first step in acquiring a marriage license is make sure you have your wedding date and location set. You will need this information when you are filling out your application for your marriage license. So make sure that you have your venue selected and your wedding date already selected and that you have no chance of changing that. Another thing to note is that often you need to apply for your marriage license in the county that you are getting married. So again, this can vary depending on what your state or your county's requirements are. So this might require a little bit of research on your end um, to see if that's something that you would need. So if you are having a destination wedding, Likely you will need to get there a few days early, maybe a week early so that you can um, go through that proper process of applying for your marriage license and obtaining it in the county that you are getting married at. Some things regarding timing, um, you want to wait until closer to your wedding date, your application for your marriage license or your marriage license um, turning into your marriage certificate expires after 90 days. So you don't want to be applying for your marriage license prior any sooner than 90 days from your wedding date. Typically about a week or two weeks is a good time frame to go and apply for your marriage license. Um, some, again, this kind of varies depending on where you're at. Some have a restriction as far as how close it can be to your wedding date. So you wanna allow at least 72 hours, ideally. Um, some states do have restrictions that you have to wait at least 48 or 72 hours from the time you get your marriage license to the time you actually have your wedding ceremony. So again, just make sure that you're looking up those requirements. But typically, if you are within two weeks of your wedding date, a week or so from your wedding date, that's a pretty good time frame to apply for your marriage license. Second thing is you're going to actually go in person and visit your county clerk. This is where you will go and essentially there's an application process to obtain your marriage license to then turn into your marriage certificate. So you'll need to go in person. You and your partner both will need to be present. Um, check and see if your county clerk office um, accepts appointments. Some do, some don't. If you want to, if you have the ability to make an appointment, that'll make it a little bit more streamlined for you. Um, you typically want to expect about an hour to do this appointment just so that you are giving yourself enough time if you do have to wait and the process of signing and paying and all of that good stuff. So what this process looks like, things you need to bring, again, this can vary depending on your state. So look up um, the requirements wherever you are or where you're getting married. And this should be listed on your government state website and go to the county clerk information page. But typically the things that you will need to bring when you go and visit your county clerk is um, a form of identification. Typically just a driver's license or a passport is sufficient here, although some states might require a birth certificate. Some states also require a witness. So if this is something that you will need, make sure that you are finding a witness to come with you and give them far enough in advance so that they can make sure that the appointment time works for them or that they're able to come when you guys go because you will all need to be present at the same time. And this person will need to be at least 18 years or older and have known you for longer than six months. You will also need to know information about your parents um, on both sides. So things like your maiden name, their birth date and birth state or location are typically things that are required on your um, application for your marriage license. Also, if you have been married before, it will be required that you have documentation of your divorce. So a certificate of divorce or a death certificate will be required in order to apply for a new marriage license. 
And lastly, there will be a fee associated with applying for this marriage license. And this varies depending on state. The range is about like $35 to $150. Here in Montana, it's $53 to apply for your marriage license. So again, just look this up to see exactly what the cost is wherever you are or wherever you're applying for your marriage license. On that note, it's a good idea to bring cash or check as not all offices accept credit cards. And another topic of note uh, when it comes to the application process is it's a good idea to know whether you plan on changing your name. If you're planning to acquire your partner's name or if you and your partner are going to hyphenate last names or however you choose to do that, it's a good idea to have that figured out by the time you go for your appointment um, or you go visit the county clerk to apply for your marriage license as this will streamline that process and make it um, not only cheaper for you to change your name but also just a little more streamlined and easier. So when you fill out your application, there will be a spot to put your maiden name as well as your surname and so if you plan to change your name that is where you want to put what your future um, name will be after your wedding. So once you have filled out the application for your marriage license you will then receive it. Some offices will hand it to you right then and there and some will mail, mail it in like a day or two. So again just kind of varies depending on where you're at so then you will acquire your actual marriage license. So the number three is don't forget to bring your marriage license with you on your wedding day. So you want to make sure that that comes with you. You will sign this you won't do anything with it the day that you require it. You will sign it on your wedding day and the requirements for this are obviously making sure that it is signed on the day of your wedding. Typically right after the ceremony is a good time to do this in your cocktail hour before you go into your reception. You will need obviously both partners present. You will both need to sign the marriage certificate and you will need your officiant. So whether this is a actual formal professional officiant or if this is a family member that got ordained for the event, whoever performed your ceremony will need to be present to sign the marriage license. In most states, there is a requirement for witnesses, two witnesses typically, and most often this is the maid of honor or the best man, but it doesn't have to be. This can be whoever you wish to be as witnesses on your wedding day. Just make sure you let them know ahead of time so that they can be prepared to, to be needed whenever you guys choose to sign your marriage license at your wedding day so that they can um, expect it and be prepared for that. I also recommend scheduling this event into your wedding day timeline so that it doesn't get forgotten and you make sure that you do it while your photographer is still around so you can get that documented. And like I said, it's a good idea typically to do this sometime during cocktail hour, usually like after you've done all of your photos, maybe you're doing um, some last minute bride and groom pictures. So at that point it already is you and your partner and your photographer and you can just get that signed really quickly before going in and just enjoying your reception and not having to take time away to leave and sign and make sure that gets done. And finally, number four, typically it is the officiant's responsibility to take care of the marriage license after the wedding. So they will return it to the county clerk office, either in person or by mail. I always recommend in person if possible. That way uh, you don't have to worry about anything getting lost in the mail or delayed in the mail. And it's always better to just go in and drop it off in person. And then that's it. Once the county clerk's office receives it and files it, you will then be issued your marriage certificate, which like I said, this is the actual um, document that you will have moving forward in life that proves that you are now officially married and it will have both of your names on it and you can obtain certified copies of this certificate if needed through the county clerk's office as well. So hopefully that cleared them some things up on the kind of process of acquiring your marriage license and the difference between a marriage license and a marriage certificate. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe to get weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice and we'll see you next week.